Hi, I'm Vanessa from SpeakEnglishWithVanessa.com. Are you ready to master the top 50 phrasal verbs? Yes, let's do it. Have you ever been listening to an English conversation, but you just can't figure out what they're saying? You know the individual words, but the meaning just doesn't add up? If you've been putting off learning phrasal verbs, you may want to check out today's lesson. It will take you from, huh? To bring it on in no time. So what are phrasal verbs? Well, phrasal verbs are a two or three part verb like this. There is a normal verb, try, plus a second part. That second part could be called a participle, could be called a preposition, it doesn't really matter. That second part is what makes this a phrasal verb. To try is different than to try on or to try out. These have different meanings, so when we use phrasal verbs, it changes the meaning of the original verb. Phrasal verbs are incredibly common in daily conversations, so I hope that these top 50 phrasal verbs in this lesson will help you to gain some confidence in your speaking, but also to help you understand what other people are saying, because it's important to know the nuances and the different meanings of these phrasal verbs. Let's get started with number one. Number one is to add up, to add up. Take a look at this sentence. Her story didn't add up. I think she's lying. What do you think this phrasal verb means? Instead of me directly telling you right away the meaning of the phrasal verb, I want you to guess based on the sentence. That's what we're gonna be doing for all 50 of these phrasal verbs. So it's kind of like a 50 question test, hopefully a fun test. <laughs> what do you think add up means here? Her story didn't add up. I think she's lying. Hmm. This means it didn't make sense. Something about it seemed not logical or strange. It didn't add up. We usually use this phrasal verb in a negative sentence. So that's what's happening here. Her story did not add up. If you are a student and you go to your teacher and say, I'm sorry, I didn't have my, I don't have my homework finished because Last night, I got into a car wreck and I had to go visit my grandmother in the hospital and then I had my dog and my dog was eating my homework. Uh, this story seems a little bit unbelievable. So the teacher might think, I don't know, your story doesn't add up. I think you're lying. You just didn't do your homework. <laughs> so here the story doesn't make sense. It's not logical. It doesn't add up. Let's go to number two. To back somebody up. Take a look at this sentence. My parents backed me up when I decided to apply for graduate school. My parents backed me up. What do you think this means? My back backed me up. We can imagine your back, the part of your body, it gives you support. You can't sit up or stand up or do much without your back. So when you back someone up, you give them support. My parents supported me when I decided to apply for graduate school. This is a great example of how a phrasal verb can directly replace another, maybe more textbook word. It's not wrong to say my parents supported me, but it's even better to say my parents backed me up when I decided to apply for graduate school. Phrasal verbs will just make you sound more comfortable and like you know what you're saying. Let's take a look at a similar expression. It's kind of a bonus tip that I'd like to add. What if I said to you, I've got your back. I've got your back. Can you guess what this means? This isn't a phrasal verb. It's just a bonus phrase that is kind of similar to this phrasal verb. It means I will support you. I am supporting you all the way. I got your back. We often use this when we want to give encouragement to someone. So if your friend is maybe gonna do something a little bit risky, well, you can say, I will support you no matter what. I got your back. Great, wonderful phrase to use. Let's go on to our next phrasal verb. To blow up. Hmm, take a look at this sentence. When I told her I couldn't come to her party, she blew up. 
Mm, this is the past tense. This is an irregular past tense verb. She blew up. Do you think she's really happy? Uh, no, instead, if this is to become suddenly angry, she blew up. So if this is part of your personality to easily blow up, maybe there's some deep breaths you can take, clear your mind a bit. <laughs> if you are easily angry, well, maybe you easily blow up. I need to calm down a bit. All right, let's go to our next one. To bring on something, to bring on something. 50 new phrasal verbs? Yeah, bring it on. Can you tell by my facial expression? It's not like the previous one. I'm not blowing up. I'm not angry. Instead, I am excited about accepting some kind of challenge with confidence. Yes, 50 new phrasal verbs. I can do it. Bring it on. We often use this to give encouragement to ourselves. If you are faced with some kind of challenge and you want to really encourage yourself, you could say, all right, bring it on. I can do it. <laughs> to bring up. You shouldn't bring up politics in this house unless you're ready for a long discussion. Hmm, you shouldn't bring up politics. This means you shouldn't mention politics in conversation unless you want a long discussion because people here are quite passionate about politics. Hmm, to bring up something. What's something that you shouldn't bring up in your country? What is a topic that you should maybe avoid in your country? If you'd like to check out some common taboo questions in English and especially in the US that you should avoid, check out this video that I made up here. It will help you know which topics you shouldn't bring up unless you want to have a long discussion. To call off, instead of calling off the wedding, the couple decided to elope. Hmm. Probably last year, if you tried to get married in your country, it might have been a little difficult because you couldn't have big weddings. Very unfortunate for a lot of people who wanted to get married last year and probably continuing this year too. So what's your other choice? Well, you could call off the wedding or you could elope. What do you think this phrasal verb means, to call off the wedding? It just means to cancel the wedding. We're going to cancel the wedding? Well, maybe you still want to get married, so you could elope. If you watched one of my previous videos about 10 funny jokes in English, we talked about this word elope. It means to run away with your lover <laughs> to get married, maybe in some uh, courthouse or maybe in a nice destination, but it's just the two of you you are eloping. So you could call off your wedding, you could cancel the wedding, or you could elope. To calm down. When I have a stressful day, I like to calm down by taking a nice long walk outside. Maybe you feel the same way. When you take a long walk outside, it helps you to calm down. This phrasal verb means to relax, to calm down. To catch up, to catch up. I met my friend for lunch to catch up because we haven't seen each other in a long time. Am I running after my friend and catching her? No. <laughs> Take a look at this other question. Wanna meet for coffee and catch up? Wanna meet for coffee and catch up? We're not running, I'm not inviting you to have a race. <laughs> Instead, this means that you are meeting with someone who you haven't seen for a while. You want to find out what has been happening in their life recently. You want to catch up. Sometimes we say catch up on what's happening in your life. Yeah, I want to catch up on what's happening, so tell me all about it. To catch up on. To check in. Look at this sentence. I went to the hotel to check in while my husband parked the car. To check in. What am I doing in the hotel? Check, check, check. No. <laughs> this just means that you're registering at a hotel. You're telling them, hey, I'm here, and they write in the computer, all right, Vanessa is here. Here's your keys. This process is called checking in. To check out. To check out could have the opposite meaning. When you leave the hotel, 
you check out, you give them back the keys and you say, I'm done, I'm leaving, thank you so much. But I'd like to give you another meaning. What if you saw this sentence? I'm excited to check out the new park in my city. Hmm, to check out the new park. Or what if I just said, check it out? Oh, what do you think this means? This means to see something or to try something. I can't wait to see the new park in my city. I can't wait to check out the new park in my city. Walk all around, see what's going on. Great, you're checking it out. We sometimes use this phrase all by itself. Check it out. And this just means, look at this. Check it out. I can't believe that my son finished a 100 piece puzzle by himself. Check it out. Look at this. It's kind of an expression of surprise and amazement. Wow, check it out. To chip in. I couldn't go to the party, but I still wanted to chip in for a gift. Hmm. I want to help participate in something. It might be with money or with your energy and time. Take a look at this. My son likes to chip in and help me with the garden. He's giving his time and energy, digging and weeding and helping me with the garden. He's not giving me money. He's not participating by giving money. Instead, it's his time. So if you can't go to a party, but you want to help pay for a special present, you could give some money to your friend and say, here's some money because I want to chip in for the present. And they will use that money to help pay for the present. It's a great phrasal verb. To close down, to close down. This is different than to close. Take a look at this. Because of construction, they closed down two lanes of the highway. Hmm. They closed down two lanes of the highway or during the pandemic, a lot of restaurants closed down. Can you get the sense of this phrasal verb? It means that they closed completely, sometimes forever. So the highway, they completely closed two lanes because they were doing construction or for the businesses, they closed forever because of the pandemic. It's a very unfortunate situation. To come down with something. Uh, I'm not feeling so well. I think I'm coming down with something. Hmm. Can you guess that this means to start to feel sick? To come down with something. We use this for not serious sicknesses. For example, maybe you have a cold, maybe you have a sore throat, maybe you even have the flu, but it's not something so serious. You might use this as an excuse. Sorry, I can't come to your party. I think I'm coming down with something. We often use something with this phrasal verb because at the beginning of a sickness, you might not know what it is, but you could say, sorry, I think I'm coming down with a cold. You could be specific if you know, or I, I think I'm coming down with, with the flu. I should stay away from people for a few days to come down with some type of sickness. And the opposite of this, to come down with, to come up with, <laughs> to come up with something. Take a look at this sentence. I need to come up with a great present for my mom's birthday. Come up with a great present. Am I picking up a great present? No. Take a look at this other sentence. I couldn't come up with anything special, so I just baked a cake. Hmm. This means you're finding an idea. To come up with a present means that I need to think about a great idea for a birthday present. Ugh, I can't come up with a great idea. Or maybe you need to write a thesis paper. You need to come up with an original idea. You need to find an idea that is original for your thesis paper to come up with something. To cut back on, to cut back on. Hmm, take a look at this sentence. I'm trying to cut back on fried food, but it's so tasty. <laughs> I'm trying to cut back on fried food. Do you think I'm trying to eat more? No, 
Instead, that means you're trying to do less of something. You're trying to take something out of your life to cut back on your consumption of fried food. Or you could say it just by itself. If someone says, why aren't you eating ice cream? You could say, I'm trying to cut back. You don't need to use on because you don't need to repeat, I'm trying to cut back on ice cream because they just said ice cream. So we know the general topic and context here. You could say ice cream again, I'm trying to cut back on ice cream, but you could just say this by itself. Uh, I'm trying to cut back. This is a really natural thing to say. To cut off, to cut off, cut off my hair? No, that's not what we're talking about. Take a look at this. The driver in the red car cut me off and almost caused a wreck. Cut me off. It's kind of an angering situation. You're driving and another car comes in. And you go, oh, and you slam on the brakes or you have to be uh, swerved to the side and be safe. Hmm. He has made it so it was kind of ending abruptly or stopping something quickly. Usually we use this in driving, that driver cut me off. Or with speaking, you could say, he tried to tell the teacher his excuse, but she cut him off mid-sentence. Hmm, maybe she thought his story didn't add up. <laughs> so as he's speaking, boom, she cut him off. And no, 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 I don't think that's an excuse. No, you need to have your homework. She cut him off. This idea of ending abruptly what he was thinking. To drop by or to drop in. Take a look at this. Hey, are you home? I'm in the neighborhood and I wanted to drop by. If you call your friend and tell your friend this, I'm in the neighborhood and wanted to drop by. Does that mean you want to drop something on the ground? Or you want to give something to your friend? Nope, it just means I want to see you. You're kind of spontaneously going for a visit to drop by. Usually this is a quick visit. It doesn't necessarily need to be, but usually it's kind of this quick visit. You can even use drop in in similar situations. Maybe you want to encourage your friends to visit you at any time. You could say drop in whenever you want. Drop in whenever you want or drop by whenever you want. Please, I would love to see you at any time. To end up, to end up, we ended up just ordering pizza and not going to the fancy restaurant. We ended up just ordering pizza. Maybe it's raining, maybe you're just tired. You had plans to go to a fancy restaurant, but that is not what happened. Instead, you just ordered pizza. <laughs> so we're talking about the conclusion. What is really happening at the end? Well, we ended up ordering pizza. We can also use this in a little bit of a deeper way. Instead of saying just some actions that happen, sometimes we use this to talk about our character. For example, you might say, he doesn't want to end up like his father. This is a little strong, but maybe his father is an alcoholic. Maybe his father is really rude or has some characteristics that the son doesn't want to have. So we could say he doesn't want to end up like his father. What is happening in his father's life as an adult? He doesn't want the son, doesn't want the same thing to happen to him. I don't want to end up like my father, so I'm going to try to surround myself with good people and get a good education and focus on positivity. Okay, there's things you can do to not end up like someone who you don't want to end up like. To figure out, to figure out, the mechanic tried to figure out what was wrong with my car. Hmm, he tried to figure out what was wrong with my car. This means he's trying to find a solution, find what's happening here. We could simply say, oh, I can't figure it out. Can you help me please? <laughs> this is a really common question, very polite question. It means you tried. I tried to figure it out, but I can't figure it out. Can you help me please? To fill in, to fill in. 
I missed the meeting. Can someone fill me in? Hmm. Notice here that we're talking about someone. Fill me in. Does that mean that I need to drink a lot of water to fill my stomach? No. <laughs> here we're talking about giving some information. Usually this is spoken information. If you miss a business meeting and you want to find out what happened, this is the perfect phrasal verb to use. Can someone fill me in? What happened at the meeting? Or maybe if you walk into your house and it's an absolute disaster, things are such a mess, and your kids look up and say, hi, mom. <laughs> you might use this phrasal verb and say, all right, someone fill me in. What happened in this house? <laughs> so you want them to give you some information, some spoken information. Notice that this is spoken because our next phrasal verb is gonna be the opposite. To fill out, fill out. When you go to a new doctor's office, you need to fill out a lot of paperwork. Are you talking to someone? Nope, you're giving information, but it's written. It's written down. So at the doctor's office, the secretary might say, all right, can you please fill out these forms and give them back to me when you're finished. Fill out these forms. I think a good way to remember fill in and fill out is to imagine the image of information going into you. So when someone fills you in, the information is going in. But when you fill out a form, the information is going out of the pen. <laughs> the ink is going out of the pen. So you need to fill out the form, but you want someone to fill you in. I hope that helps. To find out, to find out. In the next episode, we will find out who the mysterious man is. To find out. Hmm. This just means that you're learning something that you didn't know before. Some kind of information that you didn't know before. Or you might say, oh, today I found out that phrasal verbs are really important. This is something new that you learned that you didn't know before. Hmm. I found out. This is an irregular past tense verb. I found out or I am finding that out now. <laughs> to get along or to get along with. Take a look at this. I get along with my neighbors really well. I get along with my neighbors. This means I have a friendly relationship with them. We could switch this sentence up a little bit and take out with. Take a look at this. My neighbors and I get along well. Hmm. Notice how the sentence construction is different. We have both people as the subject of the sentence. My husband and I get along well. Or we could switch it up and say, I get along with my husband really well. So if we have both people at the beginning, you can cut out the word with, but if you want to have one and then the other, you can add the word with. This is a, a great way to be flexible with phrasal verbs. To get around, usually we add to get around to it. To get around to doing something. Take a look at this. One day I'll get around to cleaning the garage, but not today. I'll get around to cleaning the garage, but not today. Hmm. This means you're eventually doing something. Usually you're kind of delaying it. Oh, I'll get around to that later. This is a common phrase. I'll get around to that or it. I'll get around to it later. So if you told your, your husband, all right, I'm going to clean the garage and then you don't do it. And he says, hey, why is the garage still a mess? You might say, oh, I'll get around to it later. I'll delay it. I delayed it, but eventually I'll just do it later. Or when you do it, you could say, I finally got around to cleaning the garage. Oh, this means you have been delaying it for so long. You've been procrastinating. You said, eventually I'll do it. And then you did it. I finally got around to cleaning the garage. Whew. To get back at. To get back at. Hmm. Look at this. My sister took my shoes to get back at me for taking her sweater. If you have any siblings and you shared clothes with them, this can work out really well sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't work out so well. 
<laughs> so what is, what's happening in this sentence with to get back at? Hmm. My sister is trying to take revenge. She's angry that I took her sweater. So what's she going to do? She's going to take my shoes. Maybe she's going to wear my shoes and not tell me about it. She took my shoes to get back at me for taking her sweater. We can use this as a question too. If you're not sure about someone's motives, you might say, are you just trying to get back at me for taking your sweater? And she might say, yep, I am. <laughs> are you trying to get back at me? Are you trying to get revenge because you're angry about something I did? Hmm, maybe so. To give up. To give up? No. <laughs> Look at this sentence. After trying to change the oil in my car for a couple hours, I finally gave up and went to a mechanic. <laughs> Can you guess that I'm really happy about doing this? It was really successful. No. I gave up and went to a mechanic. This means I quit. I tried a lot and then I quit and I just went to a mechanic. We can also use this phrasal verb to give some encouragement to someone. So I know that in today's lesson, there's a lot of information, a lot of phrasal verbs, but I want to tell you, don't give up. You can do it. Continue learning. Say some of the sentences out loud with me. Repeat them. Enjoy yourself. Take some notes. Maybe cook some food, have a glass of wine at the same time that you're studying this lesson. Don't give up. You got this. To grow up. To grow up. This one is to grow up. Actually, yes. <laughs> when I was a child, I couldn't wait to grow up. Isn't that funny? When we're kids, we just want to grow up. And then when we're adults, we look at kids and say, oh, how innocent, how happy they are. <laughs> this means that you're getting older. But we can also use this kind of as an insult to tell someone to stop acting like a child. So let's imagine that you make a little, a little body sound. Maybe you fart and somebody laughs and you say, that wasn't funny. Grow up. Well, kids like to laugh at these types of things. Hey, adults do too, <laughs> but it's usually considered a, a childish thing to laugh at. So you might say, hey, that wasn't funny. Grow up. Stop acting like a child. Grow up. This is pretty harsh and you could say it with a light tone in your voice. Hey, grow up. That's not funny. You could say it like that lightly, but it can be pretty strong if you say this seriously. All right, let's go to our next phrasal verb. To hang on. Oh, can you hang on for just a sec while I check this message? Hmm, that's a great way to use this phrasal verb. Can you hang on for just a sec? This is just a second. Can you imagine what this means? To wait, to pause for just a minute. Sometimes we even use this to pause the conversation. If someone tells you something shocking, they say, oh yeah, I was hiking and I saw a rattlesnake and I picked it up. And then they just keep talking to pick up a rattlesnake is a very bad idea. <laughs> so you might say, hang on, you did what? <laughs> You're telling them, pause the conversation, stop what's happening. Hang on, you did what? Don't pick up a rattlesnake. <laughs> so here it's the same idea. You're asking someone, hey, can you hang on just a sec while I check this message? Hang on, pause, pause what we're doing while I check this message or Pause the conversation. Don't pick up a rattlesnake. Vanessa's public service announcement of the day. Please don't pick up dangerous snakes unless you are a professional. <laughs> to hang out, to hang out. Do you want to come over to my house and hang out? Hmm. This means we're just casually spending time together. Do you want to come over and hang out? There's no plan. There's no specific event. Just maybe throwing a Frisbee in the backyard. Maybe making some uh, tea and coffee and some little snacks and we'll just hang out. We sometimes use this phrasal verb as a way to answer a common question. If someone says, what did you do this weekend? And either you did nothing or you don't want to tell them, <laughs> you might say, eh, I just hung out. This is an irregular past verb. So you might say, I just hung out, hung out. And it means I sat around the house. I didn't do anything special. 
I just hung out. Great, it's a way to answer this common question. Hey, what do you do this weekend? Meh, I just hung out. Nothing special. If you'd like to see some other ways to answer this question, what did you do this weekend? Or what you got going on this weekend? You can check out this video I made up here where you're gonna have the opportunity to learn some common questions, answer those questions, and also practice speaking with me. I hope that you'll enjoy that lesson. Make sure you check it out. To hold on, to hold on. I'm holding on to hope that someday we'll be able to travel again soon. Ah, wouldn't that be great? We can get the idea, I'm holding on to hope. I'm not holding on to my phone. No, it's something more figurative. I'm holding on to hope. This is a great way to use this phrasal verb, which means you cling to something. But sometimes we use this in a more figurative way. Remember how I just talked about, hang on, you did what? You picked up a rattlesnake? Hang on? Well, we could also say, Hold on, you did what? Hold on, you did what? <laughs> so we're kind of clinging to this moment in the conversation. Wait, you picked up a rattlesnake? No, don't talk about other things. I wanna talk about this thing that you just said. It's shocking. Hold on, you did what? <laughs> Also, if you would like to incorporate phrasal verbs into your life in a fun way with songs, take a look at this fun sentence. Hold on, I'm coming. Hold on, I'm coming. This is a, a classic Sam and David song. I recommend searching for it on YouTube. Some of the words are a little tough to understand in the way that he's singing it, but you can check out the lyrics at the same time that you're listening. But he uses this phrasal verb, hold on, and he's saying, Wait, don't go away, stay here. I want to cling to this relationship and I will help you. I'm coming, I'm coming to help you. Hold on. It's fun when you can recognize phrasal verbs in songs, in movies, in TV shows. And when you hear them and you understand them, it brings such joy and excitement because you're studying, your hard work is worth it. To keep on. If you keep on practicing, you'll get better. That's true. If you keep on practicing the piano, eventually you'll get better. Maybe it will take a long time. Maybe it will take a week, but you'll get better. What's this mean? If you continue practicing, you'll get better. I feel like this phrasal verb to keep on is used a lot more than to continue. To continue is very descriptive, but in daily conversation, we use keep on a lot more. Yes. I have to keep on working, I have a lot to do. Keep on doing something. There's a fixed phrase that we sometimes use to encourage other people using this phrasal verb twice. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> what do you think this means? If someone told you, I know you're learning lots of phrasal verbs, it's a lot, but keep on keeping on. This means continue continuing. You're doing a hard, a hard job, this is a lot, but do you know what? Keep on doing it. You got this. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> to look forward to. Hmm. I'm looking forward to visiting my family over the summer. I'm looking forward to it. This means there's something in the future that I'm excited about, or maybe something I'm not excited about. No one looks forward to tax time. Maybe unless you're like a tax accountant and that's what makes you excited. Okay. <laughs> but we could say most people don't look forward to tax time. It's not an exciting thing that you're waiting for. No, I don't look forward to tax time, but I look forward to seeing my family. To look out. When you hike, look out for snakes. I don't know why I'm thinking about snakes a lot right now. Maybe because it's getting warmer and they're, they're coming out a lot more, especially where I live. So you have to look out for snakes. This means you need to be careful. Watch out for snakes. Watch out is actually another phrasal verb we'll talk about later. <laughs> but let's start with look out. Look out for snakes. There's another great idiom that has a similar meaning. It's kind of a, a bonus idiom. It's not a phrasal verb. But we might say you need to keep an eye out for snakes. Don't take your eye out and look for snakes. No, no, no. <laughs> but we use this singularly. I mean, it's a good idea to use both your eyes to look out for snakes. <laughs> but for some reason, this idiom just uses eye. 
you should keep an eye out for snakes. Keep an eye out for snakes. You never know when you might see one. You don't want to accidentally step on one. Keep an eye out for snakes. Look out for snakes. To look up. To look up. Not exactly this meaning. <laughs> you might say, I didn't know the meaning of the word to hold on. So I looked it up in the dictionary. Hmm. This is when you search for something, usually online or in a book or in a dictionary to get some more information. I looked it up in the dictionary. You might even just say, I looked it up. If someone says, oh, how do you know so much about river otters? You might say, oh, I looked it up. Or I looked up some information about them last week. So that's how I know a lot about river otters. I looked it up. To pull over. It was raining so hard that I had to pull over and wait for the rain to stop. I had to pull over. You get the sense here that it's not safe to drive. I didn't continue driving. I pulled over. This means you steer your car to the side of the road or maybe to like a gas station or somewhere safe and wait. You might just stop completely or you're just waiting for a period of time. We often use this phrasal verb for police. So you could say, um, yeah, I was driving too fast and when I saw police lights behind me, I pulled over. But we can use this in a more specific ways to talk about this situation. You might say, he, the police officer, he pulled me over. He pulled me over. Or if we want to use this indirectly, this is a really common phrase, you might just say, oh, I got pulled over on my way to the party. I got pulled over. This means someone is doing the action to me. I wouldn't have stopped if the police weren't behind me. I would have just kept driving. So who did this? Well, I didn't directly say in my sentence, but this phrase always means the police. I got pulled over. There were some lights, a siren. Ah, oh, man, I'm getting pulled over. I got pulled over. I hope that doesn't happen to you anytime soon. <laughs> to put off, to put off. Hmm, look at this. I put off learning phrasal verbs for too long. It's time to start today. <laughs> I put off. This means you are postponing something. You are delaying something. Oh, I can't put it off for any longer. I need to start today. When I saw Vanessa had this lesson about 50 phrasal verbs, I knew it was time to stop putting off learning phrasal verbs. Today was my chance. Bring it on. <laughs> to put up with. To put up with? No, we're not raising something up. You might say, oh, my sweet husband puts up with my terrible singing. He puts up with my terrible singing. Do you want to listen to terrible singing? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but if someone puts up with your terrible singing, they tolerate it. Yeah, he puts up with my terrible singing because he knows that it makes me happy to sing. So we can use put up with for tolerating something. Yep, he puts up with my singing. Or we can use it for someone, but this is a little bit harsher. What if you said, I don't know how he puts up with her. Well, let's say that uh, two people are dating and the girl in this situation is a little bit difficult. <laughs> well, you might be talking or gossiping about their relationship. You might say, I don't know how he puts up with her. I don't know how he tolerates her. Do you see here how this is not one part of her, her singing? No, this is just her in general, her character, her personality. This is a little bit harsher to say, I cannot tolerate that person. That's much stronger than saying, I can't tolerate this one thing that that person does. It's okay to say, oh, I can't put up with your singing right now. Please stop, I'm trying to study. It's different than saying, I can't put up with you. <laughs> this is a little strong, so make sure if you use this, you use it in very strong situations to run away. My dog is too lazy to run away. He knows where the food is, so he's going to stay here. He's too lazy to run away. Or 
Did you ever try to run away from home as a kid? This is a common phrase, to run away from home, and it means to escape. My dog knows that the food is here, so he's not going to run away. He's not going to escape because it's not better out there. It's better here where there's food. <laughs> and the same as a kid, well, you might run away from home. This fixed phrase, yeah, she tried to run away from home last week, but she only made it to the neighbor's house. To run away, to escape, to run into. Well, not exactly a physical running into someone, but it's a similar idea. Look at this sentence. I don't want to run into a bear while I'm hiking. Yes, of course, you don't want to physically hit a bear while you're hiking, but a more likely situation is to unexpectedly see a bear. Hmm. I don't want to run into a bear. Or you might say, I ran into my high school English teacher last week at the grocery store. I didn't plan to meet her there. It was just unexpected. I unexpectedly saw my teacher, my old high school teacher at the grocery store. I ran into my teacher. Or we could use this as kind of a, a question. You'll never guess who I ran into today. This is kind of a fun little question to ask someone and then they guess really random people. <laughs> You'll never guess who I ran into today. Hmm, good question. To run out of or to run out. We ran out of milk and eggs yesterday, so I need to go to the store. We ran out of. Am I carrying milk and eggs and running out of the house? No. <laughs> this just means that there's none left. It's all finished. We ran out of milk and eggs, so it's time to go to the store. But we can also just use to run out. Take a look at this. There's no more milk. Sorry, we ran out yesterday. Why did I not say we ran out of milk? Well, we already know the context. We know that we're talking about milk. So you could just say, yeah, sorry, we ran out yesterday and I haven't bought any new milk yet. We ran out. To stick with, to stick with. I tried guitar, piano, violin, and finally I decided to stick with the drums. Hmm, what do you think that means? That means you are continuing to do something, to continue playing the drums. I stopped playing guitar, stopped playing piano, stopped playing violin, and continued playing the drums. I think I'm going to stick with the drums. Or we could use this for friends. We could say good friends stick with each other even through hard times. They continue their friendship even through hard times to think over, to think over. Hmm. It's a good idea to think over big purchases before you buy them. Before you buy a car, you should think it over. This is a great phrase to maybe give someone advice. Think it over. This means you need to consider it seriously. Think it over before you make the decision. You need to think over a big purchase before you buy it to turn down. Now, this is not really talking about physically turning something down. <laughs> Take a look at this sentence. I was so full from dinner that I had to turn down dessert. I love dessert, but I was so full that I had to turn down dessert. Hmm. This means you're refusing something. You might even use this politely and say, I'm sorry, I need to turn it down. I'm so full. I need to refuse dessert because I'm just so full. We can use this for people too, but it's like I mentioned before with some of the other phrasal verbs, it's a little more serious. If you are proposing to your girlfriend, you're asking her to marry you and she says no, well, you might say, ah, she turned me down. This means she refused me. And it's kind of deeper about your character or who you are. It's very serious. <laughs> she turned me down. Ah, oh, I can't believe it. To turn off. It's a good habit to turn off your phone an hour or more before bed. To turn off. This means you're stopping your phone, but we can imagine you're stopping the flow of something because we can use this more figuratively too. We might say that some people have trouble turning off their brain before bed. You lay in bed and you just keep thinking about so many things 
you need to turn off your brain in order to relax and sleep. You don't wanna have your brain turned off all the time, <laughs> but before bed, it's important to turn off your brain. You're stopping the flow of thoughts, the flow of energy. Just like you need to turn off your phone, you need to turn off your brain a little bit too. To turn up, to turn up. I surprised my family when I turned up to the party unannounced. <laughs> Can you guess what this means? I appeared unexpectedly. They didn't think that I was coming and then I knocked on the door and there I was. <laughs> I turned up unexpectedly. Or you could say my cat was gone for two days and then he just turned up out of nowhere. I have no idea where he was. He didn't tell me. <laughs> he just turned up. He appeared unexpectedly out of nowhere to warm up to. Talking about cats, it took my cat a while to warm up to me. It took my cat a while to warm up to me. If you know anything about the difference between cats and dogs, well, dogs always want you. <laughs> but cats, sometimes they need more time. And that's this idea of to warm up to, to start to like someone. It takes time. We can imagine um, a curling iron that sometimes people use to curl their hair. It doesn't heat up immediately. It takes time. And that's the idea here of someone or something. My cat took time to warm up to me. Immediately, he didn't sit on my lap and love me. No, he had to make sure that I was okay first. We can warm up to someone or something, but we could also warm up to something more figuratively, like an idea. We might say, I didn't want to get a trampoline, but after some time, I started to warm up to the idea. I thought about it, realized, yeah, it could be pretty fun, and now we have a trampoline. <laughs> I started to warm up to the idea. Watch out. Oh, watch out for falling rocks! Or, watch out. Sometimes bees make a nest in the ground around there. Don't step without looking. Watch out. Hmm. This is used to caution someone, to be aware. Watch out when you hike. Sometimes bears will walk by unexpectedly. Watch out. To wear off. The energy from my morning tea starts to wear off around noon. Hmm. That's soon. <laughs> the energy from my tea starts to wear off. Hmm. Can you guess what this means? It's fading away. When I first drank my tea, I had lots of energy and then it's starting to fade away. It's wearing off. We could also use this for something that you write with. For example, you might say the marker is starting to wear off. Uh, a couple weeks ago, my son was really excited because he learned to write his name <laughs> and he took a marker and during his nap time, he wrote his name all over his sheets. You can see this here. <laughs> he kept writing his name everywhere and it's pretty funny. The marker is washable. It's not a big deal. He was really excited and now the marker is starting to wear off. So it's kind of fading away, but I'm sure he will <laughs> write it more and more because he is so excited about his new skill. Phrasal verb number 50. You're finally here. Congratulations is to work something out. Take a look at this. My husband likes the mountains. I like the beach. So for our next vacation, we're gonna need to work something out. Hmm. I could have said, we're going to need to work out a mutually beneficial solution for our vacation. Ah, a little too much. It's much more natural to say, we need to work something out. This means we need to find a compromise. Sometimes parents say this to their children if their children are fighting and they say, mom, help me. No, she did this. No, he did this. And the parent doesn't want to get involved. Your parent might say, well, you guys need to work something out yourselves. This is something that I'm not going to get involved in. Both of you need to come up with some kind of compromise. You need to work something out yourselves. So how did you do? Are you starting to warm up to some of these phrasal verbs? If you stick with practicing them, they'll get better and easier with time.
Now I want you to think over the phrases that you just learned and tell me in the comments, what are you looking forward to doing this weekend? I can't wait to read what you have to say and to see what you come up with. Well, thank you so much for learning English with me and I'll see you again next Friday for a new lesson here on my YouTube channel. Bye. The next step is to download my free ebook, Five Steps to Becoming a Confident English Speaker. You'll learn what you need to do to speak confidently and fluently. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more free lessons. Thanks so much. Bye.